follow your heart. Uh, follow, follow your first judgment. Don't, don't second guess yourself. If you feel it, do it. <laughs> Hey everyone, thanks for listening to another episode of The Creative Truth. Today we are doing a, a, a like an old, a throwback episode. We got myself and uh Therese Misher, co-founder of The Creative Truth. What's we're going to we're going to do a co-hosted episode and today we're talking to Devante James, more commonly known as Major. And uh he's a photographer and videographer based out of Savannah, a New York native like myself. He's going to be relocating up to Atlanta pretty soon. And uh, yeah, to kick off the, the episode, do you want to just tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Uh, what's going on, everybody? My name is Major. Um, I am a 24-year-old content creator. Um, I'm based in Savannah, Georgia. I'm originally from Bronx, New York. Uh, I've been on this journey for a long time. Uh, I picked up a camera when I was about the age of 11 or 12. Um, I started in church, so it was either I have to sing in a choir or pick up a camera. So I kind of still do both to this day. I just more so advertise the camera work that I do instead of my singing. Um, if you catch me singing, you just catch me in a moment. Um, <laughs> other than that, uh, I love to learn, experience new things. Um, I'm always trying to. I'm always trying to grow as a creative. Um, so I'm glad I met you guys along my journey. Um, you guys have definitely inspired me to keep going. Um, finding out, meeting Raz. Uh, that's literally my twin. Um, so that's my that's my guy. Um, and I was able to meet Tyler, man, and dope creative overall. Uh, we've been able to collaborate on a project that came out really dope. I appreciate you again for that help back in the day, man. Um, so I'm excited to be here. Thanks, guys. Yeah, it's been fun collaborating uh, with both of you. And then we're all uh, we're all going to be in different cities now, actually, because yeah. Raz is up in the sh in get outside Charlotte. So yep, yep. Uh, so you want to talk about uh, the project that that, uh, you know, I helped out with some drone work on? Yeah, so I had to do a kind of like a short film. Um, it was a play off of the star show P Valley. Um, but this project was more so based on um, instead of the nightlife, it was more so based on kind of like a hair show. Um, still the same concept. Um, it was through a friend of mine who wants to get into directing. And he reached out to me to help him with the project. And so they were requests for drone shots. But since I don't have a drone anymore and I haven't operated one in a while, I wasn't too comfortable. So I hit up the guy who I knew could get the job done. Um, he came through. Tyler did an amazing job, phenomenal job. And it was so many like compliments on the video overall. Um, it was just it was just amazing. Everybody was pleased with the overall outcome. I definitely was myself. Um, so yeah, like I said, I, I thank you again for that project, uh, your help with that project and it really inspired other creators that, um, that I'm in a circle with and they were just inspired by what I was able to produce and I really surprised myself with what I can do. Um, so yeah. Oh yeah. That project was not a short film. That was like, well, it was like 40 minutes long. Wasn't it, it was long. It was long, man. It was yeah, I like think two minutes. <laughs> yeah. I think five or 20 minutes, you know, for a short film, but I watched that and I was like, you did this. I was really impressed when I watched yeah. it. I appreciate so, it. How, mm. So you, you mentioned like church was like the first kind of uh, introduction. Did you go to school for, for this or uh, did how did you like, school. did you start? Go ahead. Yeah. So my, my educational journey has been a long one. Um, I first started, I didn't go to college right out of high, out of high school. I got a job um, to help pay the bills because my mom was sick. So I, I left when I did go to school, it was like in 2016, I went to the art Institute of Atlanta first. Um, and then I had to come back home for some stuff that happened. Um, and then I laid low for a little bit and then I got accepted into Georgia state. I started there, had to come back home again because some more stuff happened with my family. And then I was like, let me just stay here for a while to make sure I don't have to keep going back and forward, make sure everybody's fine where I'm at. Um, and then I enrolled into Savannah state university. And the, the funny thing is with that is when I started at Savannah state, I've already been shooting on their campus since I was in middle school. So I'm cool with all the staff and the, you know, all the facility and all that stuff like that on a first name basis. So when I got to the school and started creating for them, they were like, you know, who's this guy just coming out of the woodworks? I, I don't want to say killing the game, but he's, he's really like pressing the gas on everything creative. Mm -hmm. 
on the, for the university. And I'm like, you know, I've, I've been plugged in for a while. So with me going to Savannah State, um, I study mass comm. But honestly, in college, throughout the years I've been there, I've only learned one thing that's helped me with my whole journey. And that was a lighting class at the Art Institute of Atlanta. Once mm -hmm. I figured out that lighting is key for anything photo, video wise, my, my game and my, my skills just went up a notch. Um, so honestly, the best school that I've been to is YouTube University, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. And all honestly, that's, that's been my stepping stone. I'm like, to this day, like I've been using a camera for so long, but it's, I still watch the basis of how to work a camera just so I, I always remember it, but I just want to familiarize myself, but it just a little bit more. So I'm always on my P's and Q's with everything. Mm. Yeah, good lighting. Good lighting can make a, a bad camera seem like a good camera. Yeah, definitely can. Definitely. I've done that plenty of times. <laughs> yeah. I had a, uh, like you said, with twins, man, same birthday, everything. Mm -hmm. uh, similar stories in some ways, but I, you know, I went to college and I hated, I barely graduated. Uh, but now, you know, uh, literally like, I guess, 11, 12 years later, um, I'm thinking about going back to school, actually. Yeah. So I'm putting, putting up my camera and uh, going back to school. I definitely feel that, man. And I, I like sometimes I feel like, um, cause I didn't complete school. I was on my my last semester. Something happened to my financial aid, so I was like, in the, in that moment, I didn't have the money to pay the school back or pay for what I needed to pay for for classes and stuff like that. So I was like, I'm just taking a leap of faith. Um, and so I just started working. But like my current job that I just had, it was a nice job. It paid well, but it was draining me, and I wasn't I wasn't happy. So I, I tell my friends all the time, if you're doing something that pays good, but ultimately your happiness is the end goal. So I quit my job and then I just started freelancing full time. Um, and I've made more in my first two and a half weeks quitting my job than I had did in one paycheck mm. in a month. Mm. So I, I kind of want to go back to school to finish it because I was just so close to the end. Um, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm, I'm doing well. And if I would have known in the beginning before I even started uh, getting all these loans and, and stuff for school, I would have, you know, just put that money into equipment like a lot of people in the industry uh, say. Yeah. 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 Bad clients are the worst, man. Um, I just went through that experience, too, this past couple months and uh, great client, great people. But mm -hmm. the process was horrendous, you know, and it was it was like so much stress for no reason. Like it was good money. So like I tried to put up with it as long as I could. But it was just so much stress, you know, like I literally did like 20 edits on one project. Um, and then uh, it was just a few other things, you know, what I mean, like just yeah. I, I can't talk to the actual uh, client because I'm working through a marketing company. Mm -hmm. So everything I do is being critiqued by eight people. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's so a lot of opinion. Not, uh, it was it wasn't a good process. So it wasn't worth it. I definitely understand. Yeah. So, yeah. So sometimes you got to sometimes you got to let them go. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Or like Tyler would do uh, is to, you know, renegotiate. A contract he's a little smarter than i am i just <laughs> I'll, I'll i'll cut the umbilical cord pretty quickly but he uh you know he he, he, you kind of have to coach your client and tell yeah. them like no we can only do two rounds of revisions one from yeah. one from my direct report and one from your higher ups and then that's it mm -hmm. otherwise i'm billing additionally and i but i have that conversation up front yeah so, that's the key just so people know the expectation yeah and then, yeah, and then you and I have in common that um, during the pandemic, we both decided to step down from our from our roles and, and go full time. And I, I noticed the same thing that I actually uh, was making more money right out the gate. So are you um, how did you build your client base up? Did you like advertise or is it just people, you know? Yeah, most of it is people I know and word of mouth. Um, most of most of my clients I get um, are from just people I've worked with in the past. Uh, I have one consistent client. I work with the radio station down here um, and I get a lot of content for them. So they're, they're more so on a consistent basis, um, but they've helped me get connected with different people in the city. Um, other than that, like I said, it's, it's really just past clients that I work with. Um, I Sometimes I'll scroll on Instagram and reach out to certain people who have a product that I like and offer what I can, you know, offer the services I can offer to help them increase the the marketing for their brand. Um, and it's, it's been working. I've, I've gotten about maybe three or four clients just off of reaching out um, in the past few weeks. 
So as long as I feel like as long as everything is genuine, um, especially when reaching out to people that'll, you know, build more, build more business. When you like when you see a client on Instagram or another social media platform, like what like what sparks your interest? Like what what do you see that makes you want to reach out to them? Uh good question. I feel like the product itself, um, I like to see what people have done on their own before I reach out. So if I see that you're taking the time and you care about your product and you know, you know you need to market, but you don't necessarily have the tools or the team to help you market that, then I'll reach out. Cause I see you're trying, you're putting in that effort, which makes me respect you a little bit more. Um, Cause some people that I've worked with and not just in the city, but all over, they'll put flyers out and they don't, they don't put any time into it. And I honestly, it's sometimes to where I won't even go to an event if the flyer isn't, you didn't put any effort into the flyer, but I'll come just to genuinely support. But if I'm like a, just a normal person, I wouldn't really, that's, it's not attracting me. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's really what I look for. Nice. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a great thing to look for. Some, somebody who's already put in the work because mm-hmm. like also they'll probably be tired of putting in the work, yeah. you know, <laughs> if, if they've seen how much work it is and how much hard work it takes, mm-hmm. and how much time it takes, then they'll probably be tired and like ready to hire somebody and just don't know where to go. Yeah, so you might, you know, you, you're probably catching people at a, uh, at a good point in their path yeah. by doing it that way. Yeah, that's true. And I, I feel like I even say the same thing to myself. If there's something that I cannot do, I'll just outsource it. Cause you know, that's, that's as an entrepreneur, if you have to take on the burden of doing everything, it kind of runs you down. Um, and so, you know, outsourcing that type of stuff, it keeps you like a, a peace of mind. So, you know, sometimes you got to pay the price to, 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 to have that peace of mind, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This, for example, this podcast is edited uh, shout out to Hayes, Hayes Griffin. He's uh, the, the editor of the creative truth podcast. Uh, can you give some examples, some, some, some things that you've outsourced or, and also possibly how you go about finding uh, yeah, um, prime example, outsourcing you for the drone shots, um, outsourcing, what else, what else have I outsourced? Um, sometimes it, it, it depends on the type of project I'm working on. I might outsource someone to do video edits for me. Um, I'm a simple type of person when it comes to editing and some clients want all the certain effects that I can't do just yet. That's why I'm, like I said, I'm constantly learning how to do new things. Um, but if there's somebody better at it than me, then I outsource it. Um, I also do photography. So if it's something like high end photo skin retouches, somebody wants to do, I have a partner that's, that's better at that than I am. So I'd be like, Hey man, you know, how much do you need? I'll go ahead and add that into the package. I'll send you the photos, send it back, send it off to the client, stuff like that. Um, Therese, I don't know how much you want to talk about what you're, uh, thinking about, you know, your, your future plans. But um, one thing that uh, we started talking about before we hit record was that uh, Major's going to start focusing more on some narrative uh, storytelling and documentary stuff. Nice. And that's kind of ties it back to what I, uh, what you and I were talking about, which is no matter what any of us end up doing, we're still going to have the fun- foundational storytelling capabilities mm-hmm. and the ability to convey a message visually and and through audio um, so that no matter what we end up going into we've got kind of these just foundational elements that are going to make whatever we decide to do succeed so like another side project i'm working on is developing a a skateboarding application called mbd finder and uh and uh so my my background in podcasting and videography is going to help basically build that up and feed that um so uh yeah, for sure. So, yeah. So, Raz, I think that, you know, no matter what you end up doing, uh, you're not going to regret having learned all the skills that you've uh, acquired yeah, over the years. Definitely not. And I'll, I'll still keep like select select clients, but I'm just not going to take on any crazy clients. And y'all talk about I'm, I'm going to go to law school. So I'm pretty sure I can get into a law school. So that's what I'm that's what I'm working towards right now. So I'm been uh, I fired um, dead weight clients <laughs> and I am working towards. And I only, I'm still keeping like uh, all of my law clients actually, which is, you know, smart, right? Uh, if I'm going to law school anyway, I'll probably learn more that way. And yeah, so yeah, I'm studying for the LSAT now. 
investing some money in a couple of LSAT courses, live courses. So yeah, man, if I get a good score on the LSAT, I'm sure I can get in somewhere. You want to give the, um, some of the, your law podcasts a plug and then talk about yeah. maybe why that motivated you? Yeah, the, the OG is the Great Trials Podcast. And then from there, I met Derek Alexander Pope with Hidden Legal Figures. That's another great one that talks about the civil rights movement and like judges and attorneys who nobody really knows about. Uh, but they were, you know, instrumental in the in the cause of improving civil rights. And then uh, most recently, who I also met through the Great Trials Podcast is um, See You in Court. And they are two former presidents of the Georgia State Bar. And they... Um, the, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's brilliant. they're getting a lot better. They're a little bit smaller. They don't record as frequently, but they the interviews are really, really good. And they get some really uh, awesome people on there who just talk about law and like justice and, you know, and what justice means to them. And it's, it's pretty cool. And that's, that's why, that's where the inspiration comes in at is that, you know, I got to meet all these attorneys and see that they're good people and see that the majority of them, at least the ones I've met, are doing good work and helping people. And that's really at the end of the day, all I want to do. Is just help more people and make money doing it. <laughs> of course. Yeah. So let's see. Um, looking back on your career, Major, um, what are some, uh, are there any like major stepping stones or has it kind of been a gradual progression? Uh, just throughout my journey period. Yeah. It could be a person you met or maybe a, um, a connection that somebody made for you to a company or, or. Yeah. So um, when I first moved to Atlanta, this was 2015, ending of 2015, going to 2016. Um, like I said, I was going to the Art Institute of Atlanta and uh, a good friend of mine, really like my brother, uh, he's a graphic designer. He has been in Atlanta for a while. Um, his name is Eric Jones. He's uh, the lead designer of, chosen graphics and designs. Um, he helped me get plugged in with a lot of people. Um, and then I started getting intertwined with the Georgia State scene. That's what made me apply. Um, and then I was able to, you know, expand my, my network from there. Um, also, when I was still living here in Savannah, uh, there was a PR um, young woman named uh, Yana Gunn. She's based out of Savannah. Um, she formerly did PR work and she went to Clark um, and meeting her actually really just changed, changed my life and helped me get my foot in the door with um, a lot of big people. Um, so long story short, I moved to Atlanta. Um, there was a, there was like a candid conversation um, in, on Clark's campus. It was with DJ Drama and some other folks um, so I went there. I just said, do you have anybody to take pictures for the event? I'm just, you know, I'm just a new guy trying to get my foot in the door. Um, and so I went there, took pictures and I got, I took the pictures and I sent it to her like, like in no time. I had my computer. I always had my computer with me and I had my camera with me. So I just took the SD card, put it in the computer, sent it to her. And it was like, wow, like your turnaround time is really fast. Um, and so I met, um, the producer for Streets is Watching, which is a radio show, uh, DJ drama host on uh, Shade 45. And she was looking for a producer for her show. She has a radio show called the uh, John Joy Show. And so I helped come in with her. I was filming interviews that she had. And by me just being in that room that day with, with, with uh, Yana at Clark shooting for drama, like their little conversation thing, um, that really just put my foot in the door and I was able to work with them at Mean Street Studio and been able to film different interviews, um, be in different rooms, uh, work with different, different high-end celebrities and stuff like that. Um, and that's what really got me started just building up, you know, like I said, a bigger and bigger network. Um, and so without them really, uh, you know, I wouldn't be able to be in the rooms I've been in, do the projects I've been able to work on. Um, and another shout out to uh, another friend of mine named Adonis Thrax. He's uh, the owner of a company called Level Up Atlanta. And I've done a lot of work for him, content creation for him. And he's been able to plug me in with different people um, and help me build my network as well. So me just being in the room in 2016, which I say a lot, like that's my model that I started to go by, like just be in the room because you never know what opportunity can present itself by you just being 
at the right place at the right time without even planning it. So I'm really just heavy on just be in the room um, because you never know. So like I said, me just being in the room then helped me get to where I am now. And so having those connections, I'm able to still keep those connects today and I still do work for them even though I haven't been there in years. But I know by me going back up there now, I'll be able to, to do even more projects um, with them. So yeah, that's kind of the, the biggest stepping stone. Um, also me doing stuff at Savannah State, I've been able to be like a lead creative on a lot of projects. I've been helping them with homecomings for like four, maybe five years. Um, so the last homecoming, I think it was 2019, right before the pandemic hit. Um, the It was a very big homecoming. Um, I can see the link to that video so you guys can see it. But that was the last biggest project we've done for the university. And that was my first time actually having a team because I will always have to do everything by myself. Mm. So um, of course, homecoming is the, the biggest thing of any any uh, university. So I was doing creating flyers, um, all types of digital content for social media, filming, still doing photos, um, anything media or PR work, it was on me. Um, I was by myself, but then I was able to have a team and bring other people, trusted people that I've worked with before and to help me film that experience. Um, and just being, doing that and being with Savannah State, I've been able to shoot um, like a big HBCU conference called NASAP that comes to their school every year. Um, it's with every HBCU in the country. Uh, and it's, it's a good networking opportunity, but just, just building, like I said, just being in the right place at the right time and just um, networking with the right people has put me in, in, in phenomenal places, man. Nice. Nice. I didn't know. I didn't know a lot of that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, do you uh do you like prefer working with a big team and like being a team leader? Do you prefer doing it solo? Before I used to like doing it solo. Um, I like working with a team now because it's like we have each other's backs and, and it helps to be more creative overall. Mm. Because I feel like if I'm doing everything by myself, like I spoke about earlier, it, it kind of just drains me down. Yeah. Um, but, but being around other creative friends, they help me, you know, broaden my horizons and make me think, pull different ideas and things like that. Yeah. Um, but it, it really just depends on the project. Like some some projects, um, I, I already have the end in mind and I know that I have to work at a fast pace. So it's better if I just do it by myself. But if I do have, if, if it's a project that's drawn out a couple of days um, and, and the rest of the team is available, I, I have no problem with working with a team. Um, I'm, I'm all for it. So yeah. Sometimes it's, it's easy by myself. Sometimes it's easy with a team. Just depends on the project. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, me and Tyler, we've done an episode in the past on like team building. Mm -hmm. uh, like, how did you, how did you build your team, or how do you, how do you find people to be a part of it, and how do you like judge them? I feel you. Um, I found the people that I work with at Savannah State, um, and through church. Uh, I met the first person I met through church um, when I was shooting was a guy by a guy that goes by the name of David Mahone. That's his name, but that's his business name as well. David Mahone Photography. Um, and then through him, I met Jamal Hendricks, um, who is over J Vision Media. And mm -hmm. then he also has another company that we're, we're joint collective with, with a partner of ours named uh, Tevin Tyler with TTMP Productions. Um, and collectively, we have a group called Creative Perception. Um, we do a couple projects here and there, brand shoots, brand commercials, um, weddings, uh, the list goes on and on. Um, but that's that's my go-to team so we all can feel each other um recently me and tevin uh collaborated this past graduation season he would do the photos and i would do the recap videos um i've partnered with jamal with a couple projects as well um and then david i just did a couple a couple collaborations with david as well but that's my go-to team um really so if people nice. need anybody like if i all of them live in atlanta but Tevin is back and forth from Savannah to Atlanta. I'm in Savannah, but I'll be going back up there. But the benefit of having them is that we're able to travel. So if we can always recommend each other to somebody, depending on the type of project, we got somebody that can fit every strong suit, depending on what you need done. So mm -hmm. that's kind of one of the benefits of having, having a team. Um, so shout out to the, to the guys, my guys. Um, I appreciate your help for all that. Definitely. Nice. How, yeah. So how do you vet people? How do I vet people? Yeah. So say if, uh, you know, say if you put out a, you put out a bulletin mm -hmm. and you're looking for a new photographer to join the team, like how would you, how would you vet that person? 
Mm. Have you thought about it? I, I do because it's a lot of people that come to me with work and they want to work with me and I ask them, I don't even ask them to see their work. I just go to their Instagram to see their work. Um, so the first I, thing I, I have one, I was going to say, when you're reaching out to companies to, to get hired as a photographer, send your portfolio. I get yeah, emails all the time. It's like, I want to work for you. It's like, yeah. tell me what you can do. It's your work, right. Send that's your portfolio. True. That's definitely true. Um, what I look for, first I look for quality um, because that's that's a big deal nowadays. Um, second off, I look for I look for the type of story you're trying to tell or if you're telling a story um because anybody can take a picture because all the cameras mostly work the same anybody can take a photo but what can you do with that photo that that draws me in is what i'm trying to figure out um so quality storytelling and um how consistent you're, you're working um me personally i don't really post on instagram like that because of the al the algorithm change um and personally i i don't i don't really like social media if, if my career didn't involve me having to be so so much on it, I wouldn't have it at all. So I really just want to go the website route and lead people to the website. Mm -hmm. um, but I mostly just let my my clients do all the posting on Instagram. If it's something that I really, really like and I want to share, I'll share it. But more so, I want to like just capture work and print it. And like one big goal I have is like doing an art show mm -hmm. of, of never before seen work um, and just sharing it that way. I'm, I'm an old head. My mom was older. Um, so I'm, I've been an old head at heart, so I don't really like fool with the social media unless I have to. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know, I'm the same way. I hate yeah, it. Man. But, but if you, but if it makes you money, if it brings clients in, you got to do it. I have no choice. <laughs> right. No choice, man. Do it. That's, yeah, man. That's, that's kind of my vetting process, man. Quality storytelling and consistency. Um, cause that's, that's what sets, that's what sets you a part of the game. Um, but I feel like people... Me personally, I, I do what I do at a fast rate because I feel like clients pick you for what they see you do, um, which is able to allow me to turn around my work uh, a little bit quicker. Because if you hire me for what I what I do already and not trying to change what I do, it's kind of like a you know a little bit a little bit faster process. But yeah, that's that's my vetting process, man. Uh, quality, storytelling, and consistency. Nice. I was all over the place, but yeah, those are my three. <laughs> <laughs> so why uh, why documentaries and what kind are you are you gonna do? Um, why documentaries? I always I'm I'm really big on storytelling because I feel like in today's age, I'm only 24. I talk like I'm old, but in today's age, I feel like our youth. And, and, and people in general, not even the youth, but everybody only appreciates the final product. Um, but I feel like a lot of people don't take recognition and appreciate the back end work that it takes to get um, to get to that final product for you guys' enjoyment. Um, I, I, I really am really big on behind the scenes. That's why I'm, I'm not really out there in the open. I'd rather play the, play the back end and, and make sure everything is going smoothly. Um, I honestly get happiness out of seeing other people happy. Um, so that's, that's kind of why I like, I like doing documentaries and I'm always trying to learn something new about other people and sharing it with the world, because I feel like that's, that's why I started my company, Mark by Major. Um, it was just like documenting stories. I started in high school, um, filming my high school basketball team and my coach at the time, he was looking for, you know, he was trying to do something different. He was like, you know, anybody who does pictures and videos, I'm like, what are you trying to do? And he showed me like, I can do that. He said, all right, cool. So come to practice. So I, I went to their first practice um, for tryouts. And then I, I did that. I think tryouts was like from four to six. I went home, did some homework, edited the video, and then saved the video and brought it to him the next morning in class. That's my first class at like 730 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then I showed him the video and he was impressed. He was like, all right, well, you, you can keep doing this. You can stay. Um, so I did that. Uh, and then long story short, filmed every single game, every single practice. Um, until they went to the state championship and won. So I was kind of like the, the local ESPN kind of <laughs> kind of storyteller at the time. Um, and so seeing that and and seeing the uh, the the feelings I was able to evoke out of just my high school friends, I was like, man, I I can do this for a living. So just documenting that journey, I was like, people are. I never knew people were so interested in that. And then the older I got, and the more I kept going. 
And of course, thanks to Instagram, like that's that's kind of like what's in style now is seeing people's journey. Um, mm-hmm. So that's 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 the lane I want to go in. Um, so yeah, that's that's what that's what draws me into that uh, type of storytelling. Uh, what type of documentaries? I like to do music documentaries because um, that's like I said, my background is like coming from church, and I love to sing. Um, I'm a music fanatic, um, so I'm I'm just into that uh, that and fashion brands. I like to dress. Um, so I kind of like doing storytelling on on fashion as well, but more so music because that's kind of like my heart. So, yeah. Was the um, was the basketball gig paid? It wasn't. I was working for free. What was I your was first working. paid gig? Uh, my ooh, probably a birthday party. I didn't have a camera. Um, my godfather let me borrow his. I think my first gig was like two hundred dollars. I don't know what I did with the money. Um, but, uh, you like, you like it? I'm like, yeah, it's cool. So after I saw that I can get, actually get paid for doing something that I don't know how to do, um, I was like, wow, let me just take a little bit more serious, but I didn't really take my video career as serious until after I graduated high school. Um, so I guess my payment for, <laughs> I guess my payment for doing all those practices and games was a state championship ring, man. So, <laughs> you know, for, for me to not be a basketball player and still get a ring is pretty good feeling, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah, man. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, Raz, you, you got a uh, moment of truth for us today? Yeah, man. Um, yeah, so the moment of truth is to always have an exit plan. You know, mm-hmm. like like I'm leaving my 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 career path, my business. You know, I thought I wanted to do it, but I think it was just my ego thinking I could be a CEO and make a billion dollars and be the next next Jeff Bezos with a camera, right? Uh, but it doesn't always work. So I had an exit exit plan from the beginning. Uh, you know, I said I was going to give it like nine years and go really, really hard and try and meet as many people as I could and make as much money and figure out what I wanted to do in life. And uh, yeah, it just, didn't, it just didn't work out the way I wanted it to. It was successful in the way that, you know, I was able to start something. I was able to open the first podcast studio in savannah meet a lot of cool people have a radio show a lot of cool stuff but i just wasn't it didn't pan out to be what i wanted so yeah so you ha- you have to have a, a exit plan a plan of um departure you know with whatever you're doing and know know what's going to be the the plan b if that doesn't work you know some people say that you should that's the story of like, you know, the the small army that breached the shores of an enemy nation and they burned the ships behind them. So they had to win or die, you know, but I, that's kind of stupid in real life. And I don't even know if that even really happened. It's just a story, you know, so I always have a I always have a plan of of exit an exit plan. That's 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 my moment of truth, I think. OK, you know, have a way out. I support it. I'm a, I'm somebody that is a uh, risk averse. So I like to have a plan A, plan B, plan C. Yeah. And I can fall back for sure. Yeah. yeah. Let so, me, can I ask okay, you guys? Go so speaking of plan A and plan B, now I've, I've heard some people say, don't have a plan B, always stick to plan A. How do you guys feel about that? I guess it's kind of like, don't give up all your dreams, but still like, yeah, yeah realistically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have to be realistic, man, because like you can have a dream, but then um for me i had a dream (laughs) like martin luther king and then i uh and i i pursued it and i stuck with it Mm -hmm. and i didn't give up and i'm still not really giving up because at the end of the day once i thought about it the dream was to be a good dad the dream was to be a good husband Mm -hmm. the dream was to set my family up for success in the future that's it really and i thought i could do it and you know, something that I love telling stories, interviewing people, making videos, documenting, documenting, you know, just visually and, audio, you know, you know, with, with audio yeah. stories, just like you said. But the dream is really I, like I wanted to do, do that so I could set my kids up for success. So I haven't given up. And I, also from the the original path of being a podcaster, I was able to meet all these attorneys who inspired me to follow a you know pursue a goal that i think i'm really gonna love and still gonna you know help me achieve my dreams of setting my family up for success you know my 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 lineage make sure that they are set up higher than i was you know Mm -hmm. 
So th- that's that's what I think. I think that if you reach to a point where you're not happy anymore and things are stressful and everything that, you know, in- instead of just like beating against the wall, trying to break it down or your fingers being all bloody, trying to climb over this brick wall, mm-hmm. you know, just reassess and yeah. see if you can walk around it or see if there's another wall over here just as tall that you can climb to the top of easier. Right. You know, it's not necessarily giving up on your dream. It's about being able to take a step back, see the forest, and, and make a new plan. So a previous guest of mine was uh, Bruce Pandolfo, who's a college friend of mine, and he's a writer and musician, a uh, poet, basically. And um, and he said that he doesn't actually want to reach that, that hyper level of success in his career field because uh, each day he gets to wake up and do what he wants and it's able to make him enough money to survive and he doesn't have somebody over him telling him what to do so in that way like he's already successful and he, he says that like if you if you become like a number one hit artist or whatever um you kind of are then at the mercy of your fans and the label and you know you're almost like forced to you basically give yourself a boss again inadvertently mm-hmm. even though that's like the goal for a lot of people is becoming a famous artist or famous whatever but um but yeah i mean in some ways for me just being able to wake up and grab you know pour myself some coffee and i don't set i know i don't set an alarm anymore you know i just wake up when i wake <laughs> up like that's success right there mm-hmm. But uh, as far as like playing it safe and taking risks, I have found that I, I, I played it safe a lot when I was younger. And actually, I'm the older I get, the more confident I get in who I am and what, you know, what I do. And so I'm able to actually take more risks and revisit some previous goals that I had shelved for a while. So I kind of always knew that I wanted to leave New York and, but it took till I was 27 because I took my first job out of college. And um, instead of going to school for film, I went to school for TV because I thought that'd be a little more marketable, but really I'm just working for myself anyway. So who cares? And then, yeah, it took until I was, it was, it was a, it was two days before I turned 30. I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to become self-employed uh, in my twenties. So when I was 29, I left my job in the middle of the pandemic and I haven't looked back and I'm ideally, I'm hopeful that I never have another traditional boss again, because so far what I'm doing is working for me. And because it's, it's working, I'm then more confident to take more risks. And so, like I was mentioning before this call, this podcast studio should be getting a little bigger in the next, uh, couple months and uh and then building a team and uh just keep doing what i'm doing and taking risks so it's yeah i'm, I'm definitely somebody that raz was ready for me to quit my job a year ago a year and a half ago yeah. but i was like i gotta do these things before i'm ready and uh and so i did i, I made sure i was like not fail proof but like i had everything in line before i took that big leap of faith so. I'll say uh, I'll say one more thing too. Um, over the past year, or I guess since the beginning of this year, I've been like just really angry at all the like self help gurus gurus out there, you know the Dan Locks and Tony Robbins and even like Et the Hip Hop Preacher and all these guys that just sell you a dream, but you could never realize that dream because they have a different set of skills than I do, you know. So it's like waking up every morning at 4 a.m. and grinding it out and going hard all day. And, you know, they're selling you this dream, but it's a lie. It's just like a, cause you don't know what type of connections they have. You know what I mean? Like you don't know who is helping them out behind the scenes. You don't know uh, if they're doing things like dirty stuff to get money and scamming people to get money. You just never know. So it's, it's just like an NBA player telling you to, if you just jump higher, you can dunk, you know what I'm saying? It's not possible always. So, you know, I've been, that, that kind of also woke me up a little bit because I fell into that trap early college and high school when I started reading all these self-help books by Tim Ferriss. And um, I don't know, it's a whole, it's a ton of people, you know, Tony, like I said, Tony Robbins, it's a ton of people out there who are selling this dream that doesn't, that can't be, that can't be realized for most people. They're the top 1%. The 99% can't be the top 1%. It just doesn't work like that. You know what I mean? So it's like, you can, you can strive your hardest and you won't reach their level. So you have to figure out what your le- what level of success you want to reach and what success means to you. So that's why 
that's why I made my my dismount, you know, and I'm going a different direction is because I know it took me a while to really realize it, but I know what I want to do and I want to be able to help people. And I know I can use the skills and the connections I made so far to get there, but, you know, a self-help person and that whole thing of, you know, don't, don't let go of plan A, it's a lie, you know, and you can end up, you know, it's just miserable mm -hmm. trying to follow that advice. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's a, big, a big part of this podcast is to kind of um, help guide and steer younger people who want to go down these career paths. So it's interesting that we kind of have three different stories and we've all kind of done a lot of the same stuff, but we've all done it a different way. Uh, Major, can you give some advice to like a 17 or 18 year old version of yourself, somebody that wants to get into this career? I mean, we already talked a lot about this, like, is college necessary? You know, how they are making the we've all we all agree that making connections is like super important. Um, but just give some uh, some final words of advice for uh, a younger person that wants to get into this career field. Got you. Um, I'll, I'll first start off by saying uh, not even like career based, but just as a, as a person overall, um, follow your heart, uh, follow, follow your first judgment. Don't, don't second guess yourself. If you feel it, do it. Um, that's something that I've, I've been telling myself lately. Um, and, and like words I used to hear from my, from my friend Juan Moore, he's like, just jump. Um, you have to just jump cause you never know what, what was going to happen. Um, like I said, myself, just be in the room, um, just take just take advantage of every opportunity. Be smart. Um, know the difference between uh, missing an opportunity and, and being used, um, especially in this career, um, because a lot of people see that you can present something and, and add uh, and be beneficial to their team. But sometimes they're just using you for, for the talents you have and not the, you know, um, they're, they're using you for the talents you have and not, you know, anything else. Um, so just be just be wise. Um, as far as it comes to like the, the career field of, of photography, videography, and things like that, um, shoot as much as possible, even if it's free. Um, like I said, you never know what it can take. I, I, I'm just big on taking risk, like especially now that I've taken a risk and, and stopped having that cushion of a nine to five steady paycheck. Um, and if you're younger and you live with your parents, save like say understand the importance of saving your money understand credit um understand just just having that that safe cushion and learn it while you're young because when you get a little bit up in age and, and you've done craziness in the past it's going to catch up to you um so just make sure you learn all that stuff while you're young and never stop learning always be an open book even if you know it all like i said i still learn the basics of, of things to this day um and i'm probably you guys still learn on, on different levels yourselves of, of things you need to learn but always be an open book. Um, Every day. I'm a, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big listener. I don't talk a lot. Um, I, I just try to listen. Um, my, some of my friends like, are you listening? Like I'm listening, but I just don't talk because I don't want to talk. Um, I don't want to talk off of feelings. I want to talk off of uh, sensible, sensible uh, responses, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, just, just always shoot. Uh, follow your heart, first of all. Always continue to shoot. Um, take as many opportunities as possible, paid or unpaid. Um, when you're getting into this field, uh, a lot of people might, might ask, you know, what to start off charging people. You just gotta, you just gotta learn. Um, mm -hmm. it, it comes with the territory. Uh, most people say pay off experience. Most people say pay off a time. Do your research. Like I said, knowledge is knowledge is power, um, with anything. So yeah, just, just, you guys keep going, stay positive, stay motivated, just jump. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's all I got for you guys. Good stuff. Do you want to take a second to plug uh, plug your business? How can people well, learn more? Yeah, man. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Mark by Major. That's M A R K E D B Y M A J O R. My website is markbymajor.com. Um, all my links is on there. If you just go to my website, you'll find everything my, my work, my video work, my photography work, um, a little bit more about myself. It'll link you to my Instagram, uh, my YouTube, everything like that. Uh, yeah. That's, that's really it, man. Reach out to me anytime. Um, if you just want to talk, just have questions, um, want to collaborate, anything like that, I'm, 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 I'm here for it. Cool. You have any uh, closing words for us? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> 
Well, then, since he's got nothing for me, uh, in upcoming episodes of The Creative Truth, I'm going to be talking to more artists, creative professionals, and entrepreneurs to discover their path to success. Uh, for podcast episode feedback or guest suggestions, you can email me at wecreatetruth at gmail.com, or you can learn more and buy some swag at creative-truth.com. Thanks for listening. Hey, here's my, here's my closing words. Tyler, 50% of that swag is by... <laughs> I think I made three bucks so far. So okay, I'll, that's a dollar fifty on me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, okay, let's close this out.